Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. I'm here with, of course, Mark Spencer, and we're going to be talking about um, Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro and a little motion, motion. actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Combined. Combined. Round yeah. tripping. Yeah. Round kind tripping. Of, well, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh, I want to give you some motivation. While if you're a Final Cut Pro editor, you really should be interested in motion. It's 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 an important part of your toolkit. Okay. And I want to show, and I also I want to start by showing something that most people don't realize is in Final Cut Pro that's very powerful. Right. So the motivation is you need to make a title. Okay, and you might have looked at the titles browser in Final Cut Pro right here with the T, and there's a variety of titles. And if you just move your uh, pointer over them, they animate, or you can play the space bar and see what they look like. Many different kinds. I'm not going to say all kinds, but many different kinds of titles <laughs> in here. I want to point out <laughs> this one called Custom. All right, and if you do preview that, it looks incredibly boring. Why would ever want the custom it, what title? What is it doing? Is it anything? It's not doing anything. So. My, is that the Control T one from the my, menu? Sorry, it is not. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. My point is, you may think to pass this by, and I'm going to say, don't pass this by. This is an extremely powerful, powerful title, the custom title. In fact, if you if you do use Motion, you might be aware of something that you know about called the sequence replicator. Um, I'm sorry, the text sequence behavior. The right. The text sequence behavior. This is basically the text sequence behavior built right into Final Cut. Okay? Now I'm recalling what this title does. All right, so I'm going to select it and just press E uh, to bring it into the timeline. I'm not going to place it over a cliff. Of course, you could. And I'm going to set a play range out point, maybe about there, O. Oh, and I also have looping enabled. So if I press the forward slash key, it'll just play over that. OK, so nothing's happening right now. But check this thing out. First of all, the title is kind of boring because it's a really small, boring font. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to the text inspector and make it so something we can see. So I'm just going to make a big fat. Uh, oh, don't choose impact. I okay. won't. I won't. I won't. Good, I won't. Good, I'll choose good. something a little bit different. I'll choose intro. Uh, something. No, actually, I'll do this June Gall. I like this oh, one. Yeah, June Gall. And then I'll make it quite a bit bigger. I do want something we can really see. And um, here's the point. If I go to the title inspector, there are a whole bunch of parameters up here that all start with the word in and then a whole bunch of start with the word out. And the idea is you can animate any of these parameters to change over time. So for instance, in is how the title comes on screen. So if I drag the opacity to zero, what happens is each letter animates on. You're actually making Final Cut function a little bit like motion right now, aren't right, you? Right, <laughs> I have real-time playback while yeah. I'm doing this. Now each letter comes on, there's an in spread, which is very useful to, to spread out that animation a little bit more, make it kind of look smoother there, okay? In position, I could have each of these letters uh, move over as they kind of slide in. Looks real nice. I'm doing interactive title design in Final Cut Pro. Let's turn off my audio so we don't hear that again. And you have an I email, by the way. I can also, oh, thank you. Yeah, I turned off notifications, but I didn't turn off the audio there. So in rotation, check this out. If I pop it open, there's X, Y, and Z. So this title animation works in 3D space. So uh, for position, if I pop it open, I also have Z. So if I drag way up in Z, now these letters are flying in in 3D space. I'll undo that. I can rotate them as well in 3D space. So if I rotate around Y, they each spin on. So you can see you can combine each of these and do some really interesting animations. OK, so I'll actually do X here. And there I have a nice little title animation. Maybe I could add scale as well. So I'll take scale down to zero. And they each grow. I like how you're doing this in real time while it's looping. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's just interactive design. Now, I'm going to add, here's why you might want to use motion. This is a, a great thing. I was thing. hoping you'd get to that. Yeah, I'm going to get to it. Actually, I'm going to stop playback right now. Stop playback. Stop. There we go. Um, I'm going to stop playback because one thing I would like I love how these rotate, but notice how they're rotating from the baseline. You want them to rotate from the center, don't Maybe you? Maybe one from the center or from the top down, something else. And you can't do that here. You can do many things. You can control how the title animates on and off, position, rotation, scale, uh -huh. tracking, other parameters, uh, blur, blur it on and off, opacity. But what I'm going to do is control click on this and choose open a copy in motion. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is where if you do have motion, you can add a parameter that will give you a little bit more functionality. And this is what I love, is that all of these titles, transitions, effects, and generators... Uh, Originated built, in motion. Yeah, they all are built in motion, so you can modify them in motion. And the trick here 
is to go uh, select the text layer in Motion. This is something you don't even know, need to know how to use Motion, you just need to know where to find this. If I go to the Inspector and I go to the Layout uh, pane of the Text Inspector, there's something called Position under Behavior Controls here. Let me, actually, we'll have zoom that up later. So right here in Position, there's Position X and Y and Z. And what I'm going to do is just control the right click on the word Position and choose Publish. Wait, before you do that, would it not make sense to loop it like you were in Final Cut to test out the... Uh, it, it, it would, but I'm just, just trust me. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> just for the sake of time, I'm just going to publish that. <laughs> so now if I select the project in the layers list and go back to the inspector, uh, we can see all the published parameters, and at the bottom is our new one called position. Now, position is not going to mean very much, so I'm going to change this to anchor, uh, as in kind of like the anchor point around which an object scales or rotates. So now I'll choose to save it, and I'll save original. It's called Custom Copy 1 because I've done this before. I'm going to Command Tab back to Final Cut Pro. And now I'm going to take, take my custom copy and drag it on top of the existing one, wait a minute, and choose Replace from Start. And by doing that, I don't lose, I don't lose, I lost my title. That's, I'm surprised that that happened. No, it still says title. No, but <laughs> oh, I always said title before. I never changed it to say something yeah, else. I'm sorry. I thought I go. typed something no, else. No, you right. didn't. <laughs> right, I, I didn't. Don't think so it says so. This, no, I didn't. I didn't. You're right. right it says the same thing. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I practiced this, I changed it, but here I didn't. That's funny. This title's a little boring, so let's just <laughs> go ahead and, and do something really um, custom. Custom. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really, really, amazing. really. So cool. let's go back to uh, make a little out point and play, actually, forward slash to play the play range. And now if I go back to the title inspector, and choose to rotate the uh, X position. So they all still rotate up. Still on the bottom of the yeah, uh, text. Still on the bottom. I'll increase the spread a little bit for a little smoother. But now if I scroll down to the bottom, we have this new anchor, and I want to move that anchor point up. So I'm going to drag in Y. And you can see now the letters rotate around close to their centers. You have to kind of move it around, but I'm interactive. It's or like a it. DNA strand now. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, right. kind of twisting. It just <laughs> yes. gives you a whole other option. Or I could yeah. move way, I way up, I way, way up, and now they flip down from above. And of course, I can just drag this in real time to reposition it where I want. So just okay. one little change has made a huge difference in yeah. your flexibility in terms one of what you change. can animate. Yeah. So the message is, within Final Cut, there are some very powerful title animations that may not reveal themselves just by looking at the preview. Right. And the second message is, if you have motion, you can take them even further. Fantastic. Now, Mark has a tremendous training at RippleTrain.com, rigging and publishing. So if you're interested in just kind of uh, getting your head around how to make custom of transitions, uh, generators, effects. Yeah, and you roll your own. Roll your yeah. own. Uh, you'll definitely want to check out his training. And we have like 17 hours of um, total training. <laughs> it's not that so it's bad. binge watching. <laughs> but anyway, we, we, it's great, great stuff up there. Um, plus, if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, we're, we're doing two new movies a week, uh, Final Cut Pro on 10 under 5 and Motion Magic Motion under Magic. 5. So yeah. you got to watch his uh, uh, tutorials. They're fantastic. Um, follow us at rippletraining.com, and feel free to email us or post on our uh, Facebook page, what have you. So, I want to thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time. <laughs>